Roush Games! Hello, 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 and welcome back to Roush Games here on YouTube. More importantly, welcome back to Superstars, the once-a-week show here in our WWE 2K14 Universe mode, where we go over stories and play one, one subscriber-voted matchup here from the five-match card. We just saw the limousine arrive in the parking lot carrying the Million Dollar Corporation, Ted DiBiase, King Kong Bundy, your new World Heavyweight Champion, Andre the Giant, as well as the new signee to the SmackDown roster and the Million Dollar Corporation, everybody's favorite vagrant, Virgil. He is now part of this universe mode. And they are here, they are at Superstars tonight. The fact that we showed you their arrival probably means they're going to be significant for this evening's programming, but before we get too far ahead of ourselves, we do have our five-match card to go over uh, in case you missed it on the Roush Games subreddit earlier this week. I did post a match card for you to vote on, and a whole of three votes were tabulated, meaning no even numbers, no tiebreaker necessary. Good job, guys. Um, we do have a match that we're going to play tonight. Our matches here are the first one, Six versus Scott Steiner, both men in the NWO one-on-one. -on -one. The tag team match between the new team of the Rhodes family, Cody and Dusty, father and son, taking on the Million Dollar Corporation. That's why we showed you the limo, Andre and King Kong Bundy. We've got the Macho Man Randy Savage taking on CM Punk in the fantasy match of a lifetime, according to this announcer. And Darren Young versus R Truth, and then Diesel versus Stone Cold. And with the votes tabulated, we are indeed going to be playing the Macho Man versus CM Punk. It was two to one this match versus the tag team match. If it came to a tiebreaker, I actually would have voted for this tag team match, despite how much I want to see this one play out. But it's okay. That is our match that becomes our main event. So we're going to go through the other four first we're going to start off up here with the nwo six versus scott steiner we know that kurt hennig got a win over darren young at the extreme rules pay-per-view and now the other two members of the nwo are just apparently going to fight each other to open superstars and to simulate through we have six beating scott steiner the man some people refer to as x-pac he wins and now we are going to head backstage for a little bit of a vignette we will be right back guys and here we are backstage. We've got Natalia in Vince McMahon's office. Let's see what they are going to talk about. Oh, she's talking about the non-title match at Extreme Rules. This is going to get testy. She already tweeted about this this week. She demands. <laughs> oh, man. All right, guys, we're back here in our little YouTube outpost, and as we just saw, we had Natalia storming into Vince McMahon's office, demanding a title shot for AJ Lee's Divas Championship. I mean, last week heading into the Extreme Rules pay-per-view, she did indeed have two, count them, two number one contendership matches against both the rivals, uh, Lita and Caitlyn, winning them both, proving twice in one week that she was the number one contender for the championship. And then that title wasn't even defended at the pay-per-view. There wasn't even a match put on the card. Yet, as she mentioned on Raw behind the scenes earlier this week, which we quoted her on on our Reddit, reddit.com slash Roush Games, um, 
there was a United States Championship match to open that show that was actually a triple threat match between Dean Ambrose, JBL, and Eddie Guerrero. Neither of the challengers, JBL or Guerrero, had had any form of number one contender match to prove their worth in a title, and they were both given a shot simultaneously while Natalya proved twice that she should have been in the match and wasn't even given one. I think she's justified in being angry here, but I don't think she's taking Vince McMahon's position as CEO and head booker and everything else here in WWE with as much um, seriousness <laughs> as she should. And she is indeed lucky to not be fired after that, but she's making her voice heard loud and clear that she thinks there needs to be a new Divas Champion here in WWE, one that actually defends the title every now and then. I don't know if after that rant we can depend on seeing a title match at Over the Limit later this month, but we'll see how that goes and we'll see whether or not she can even maintain a job if she keeps doing that. But in the meantime, we're going to move into our second simulated match here on Superstars, our non-televised show. It is going to be the tag team match, the Rhodes family, Cody and Dusty, father and son, taking on the brand new World Heavyweight Champion who we just saw for the first time leading off this show since Extreme Rules when he beat Alberto Del Rio, who is now exiled to NXT. He'll be teaming up with his partner in the Million Dollar Corporation, King Kong Bundy, and this simulation coming right now. Oh, the Rhodes family with a surprise win over the Million Dollar Corporation. Their first time tagging in the ring together here in this universe mode, and the father and son do get a big win over the team that many people think should be considered the number one contender to the Shields tag team titles, which also were not defended at Extreme Rules. So we're going to be moving ahead to our next match, but first we actually have two very special guests hitting the ring right now. We're going to show you what they have to say and we'll come right back. Here we are in the ring with the real Americans, Zeb Coulter and Jack Swagger. Zeb Coulter not looking like himself, but let's see what they have to say here. They say it's a very important message. I kind of figured this would have to get discussed eventually. Cesaro sent down to NXT as a result of last month's bad performance to make room for our newcomers here. Oh! Well, there you have it. Hey guys, we are back here in the little YouTube studio after that stunning announcement from Zeb Coulter representing the Real Americans. I mean, up to this point, they were a tag team between Jack Swagger and Antonio Cesaro, and we did see them in action together last month, but they deemed that his performance in the ring last month and his, his being sent down to NXT as a result of that performance is enough to have him removed from the tag team, which is huge news. And it appears that Swagger is going to move on as he originally was with just Zeb Coulter as his manager. That's our breaking news on this edition of Superstars. Antonio Cesaro, no longer a member of the Real Americans. He is officially on his own down in the little pond that is NXT. You gotta think, if he ever finds his way back up to this main roster, there's gonna be hell to pay for, for Coulter and Swagger. We gotta see what happens there. Now we're gonna get into our next match simulation here. We are repositioning Savage versus Punk as our main event, the one that we will play through. The fourth match of the evening here that we're going to simulate, technically now the third. Darren Young of the Primetime Players taking on R-Truth. Not a whole lot of story heading into this one, and the simulation coming in... R-Truth gets a win over Darren Young. Darren Young's hard luck just continues here. Remember, he did, as we mentioned earlier, he lost to Kurt Hennig in a one-fall match at Extreme Rules. His primetime players lost a tag team match to Edge and Kofi Kingston a few weeks back on SmackDown in one of the, the turning points of the rivalry between Edge and Kofi that resulted in Kofi Kingston also being sent down to NXT. But now, we are going to head back to the ring. We have some more special guests, and I think you guys are going to recognize them. All right, guys, here we are in the backstage area with the entire Million Dollar Corporation assembled. Let's listen in and see what they have to say. Bill and Al, of course, referring to Goldberg and Alberto Del Rio, neither of whom have been seen since Extreme Rules.
What? All right, guys, we're back in the little YouTube trailer slash hut that the McMahon family has provided for us outside of the Superstars Arena, and we're going to simulate through one more match here, but that, that was an interesting little promo we just had from the Million Dollar Corporation backstage in the arena. Ted DiBiase saying that after Extreme Rules, with both his victory over Goldberg and Del Rio's title victory over Alberto Del Rio, they have a figuratively taken over the SmackDown brand here. There seems to be nobody that could stop the Million Dollar Corporation. But now, that, that word he used, that they literally want to own the WWE, and that given the correct terms Vince McMahon would sell to them, I mean, it sounds to me like he's trying to buy the, com the company. And uh, from what I've heard, it's not for sale right now. I don't really know what to make of that, but... He's not one to really mess around when it comes to things like buying and selling and any other exchanges that revolve around some form of currency. The Million Dollar Man, that tends to be his M.O. So we're going to keep a very close ear on that and see if Vince McMahon has any sort of rebuttal over the next few days. But it appears as though even without the sale of the company, potentially, the Million Dollar Corporation is completely on top of their game and... The entire SmackDown roster is in danger of being taken over at this point. It was actually refreshing to see the Rhodes family defeat the Million Dollar Corporation earlier on tonight to show that they still have work to do in the tag team division and they're not just going to be gifted the Shields titles. But either way, we've got two more matches. We're going to go through to what was initially the main event tonight. Diesel taking on Stone Cold Steve Austin one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to get the simulation in right now. And Stone Cold does indeed beat Diesel. That's good. We haven't seen much of Stone Cold in this universe, but it's good to see him coming out on top. We have one more quick interview to get through on this edition of Superstars, and then we will be right back for this evening's true main event, the Macho Man Randy Savage taking on CM Punk. Stick with us, guys. We'll be right back. And we're backstage. We have Michael Cole interviewing John Cena. Let's see what he has to say here. Obviously going to be talking about the loss of that title at Extreme Rules. He did beat him with a sleeper. And if you missed that on Reddit, their rematch was indeed confirmed last Monday night by Vince McMahon. The rematch clause John Cena had for the belt. They will have a rematch at Over the Limit later this month. He's not afraid to make this personal. Oh, that looks like the end of that interview. We're going to go straight to our main event between CM Punk and the Macho Man Randy Savage, guys. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is it. This is the match that 67% of you voted for us to play here on Superstars. And it's a match that could only happen here in this WWE 2K14 universe mode on the Roush Games channel on YouTube. CM Punk taking on the Macho Man Randy Savage. This is the first time we will see CM Punk in ring action in this universe mode. This is definitely not the first time for the Macho Man, though. We've seen him in the ring a few times here on Superstars, and most notably, we saw him in the ring this past Monday night in the main event on Raw, taking down United States Champion Dean Ambrose in a non-title submission match, and then apparently... After the show on Twitter, because the Macho Man obviously uses Twitter, going back and forth with Ambrose, resulting in what appeared to be a challenge to a title match at Over the Limit. There's been no uh, real confirmation on this from any of the powers that be, Vince McMahon, any, anyone within the company. But that seems to be what both are angling for, and we're excited to see it happen. Ambrose just retained his United States Championship match in a triple th United States Championship in a triple threat falls count anywhere match at Extreme Rules against both JBL and Eddie Guerrero. As we have mentioned here, he looked like he was not going to win that match. There were a few kind of desperate seconds there, but he really hung in there and came out still holding his gold and the next night on Raw lost to the Macho Man in a submission match. He's not happy about it at all and we're kind of excited that there may be a title match for the Macho Man so early in this universe mode. Um, 
as mentioned before this past Raw on Monday night, we only have seen him so far in matches here on Superstars, losing to Dolph Ziggler last week, heading into Extreme Rules, and beating Ryback uh, earlier in the month of April. Ryback we also have not seen in quite a while. He was the mascot for Superstars, remember. Um, but Macho Man is really not faring well against CM Punk in this particular match. The computer is taking its legend difficulty way too seriously for this announcer's liking. The Macho Man can get back into this, and he wants to. He wants to prove that he's on a hot streak, and he wasn't just taking advantage of a weakened Dean Ambrose on Monday night. But there is Punk into a STO, and he's going to roll Macho over into that Boston Crab, and Macho's really got to get to the ropes here. He's biting down on him, and now the ref calls it. And the Macho has to do something here. CM Punk is just fired up. Oh, and now there's CM Punk with Macho up on his shoulders. And he drops him down. There's the go-to-sleep hit. And Macho Man is out. CM Punk's going to drag him a little bit closer toward the center of the ring. And he's going to go for the pin. One, two, three. Oh, what a short, dumb match that was. CM Punk with a big win over the Macho Man. Definitely hit the resiliency a little bit too late on that pinfall. And now we've got to see how the Macho Man responds here. We got to see if he comes back next Monday on Raw and continues going after Dean Ambrose for that United States Championship. We've got to see if Dean Ambrose accepts. And after a big win here on Superstars, a huge win in a match that should have been a lot longer, uh, CM Punk, we don't know what he's going to do. We don't know if he's going to appear on major programming on Raw, the brand that he is signed to. But either way, that's going to send us off the air for the night, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back for SmackDown a little bit later this week. Remember, if you like this video, slam that like button down. I want to feel it when you push that button. And if you're new here, subscribe, stick around, keep checking out the good content we're going to have here. We will have many more voted upon matches coming up. And actually, uh, moving into SmackDown, we are no longer going to be using the IWC roster at the end of SmackDown. We will be having a separate IWC show where we play it out much like Superstars, except your cutscenes are going to be for the NXT roster. So keep that in mind, guys. We'll have another vote at the end of SmackDown to see what matches you play out on IWC. We'll see you next time.